So last week, we learned that the College Democrats of Massachusetts were planting a fake story about Alex Morse in an attempt to smear him at the behest of Richard Neal, the incumbent Democrat who Alex Morse is challenging. Now, we're getting some polling data that tells us a little bit more about this story. It tells us that if Richard Neal's internal polling data reflected the same thing, then we know exactly why people were willing to play dirty on his behalf. Because Alex Morris poses a very serious threat to Richard Neal. Because his campaign tweeted out this poll, showing him just 5 points behind Richard Neal, and 13% of voters currently undecided. Now, this means that he's basically in a better position to unseat Richard Neal than Cori Bush was in the lead-up to her election where she actually beat Lacey Clay. So it looks as if this could be another upset where a progressive lawmaker or a progressive insurgent unseats a Democratic Party lawmaker. And this would be huge, and they're afraid. They don't want that to happen. So, you know, people around Neil who were close with him decided to uh, plant this smear campaign just a couple of weeks before the election takes place. Interesting. Now, um, since we talked about that story, the plot has thickened quite a bit because college Democrats, after learning that they're politically motivated, well, they didn't act alone because apparently the state Democratic Party in Massachusetts was helping them here, not just to smear Alex Morse, but helping them with the subsequent cover-up as well, because we got these two new stories from The Intercept, which read, Party leaders investigating origin of anti-Morse campaign helped orchestrate it, documents reveal. Now, this was published on August 14th, but just three days later, The Intercept learned this. Massachusetts State Party leader told college Democrats to destroy communication records. Veronica Martinez had coordinated with the students prior to the release of the allegations of sexual impropriety against Alex Morris. So within the span of a week, the state Democratic Party of Massachusetts, unbeknownst to all of us, tried to help the college Democrats of Massachusetts plant this story about Alex Morris. And um, we know that they're doing this presumably, presumably because Alex Morris is catching up to Richard Neal. Now, depending on when that poll was taken, like the more we learn about this story, the more of a bombshell this actually turns out to be, the more that the numbers could tip in Alex Morris's favor, which is ironic if that does actually play out because they planted this story in an attempt to help Neil, and ultimately they may end up hurting Neil. Now, we still don't know if Richard Neil himself had any involvement, but I mean, regardless, this is really, really bad. It looks bad for uh, the campaign of Richard Neil, and it certainly looks bad for the Democratic Party establishment in Massachusetts. Now, authors Owen Higgins, Ryan Grimm, and Daniel Bogislaw report, as the primary in Massachusetts first congressional district turned into a national story following allegations of misconduct against Holyoke Mayor Alex Morse, the state Democratic Party declined to weigh in, citing its policy to remain neutral in contested primaries. But behind the scenes, the state party had been coordinating with the college Democrats of Massachusetts to launch these very allegations according to five sources within the state party and connected to the College Democrats of Massachusetts, a review of messages between party leadership and CDMA leadership and call records obtained by The Intercept. The documents show that Massachusetts Democratic Party's executive director, Veronica Martinez, and chair Gus Bickford connected the students with attorneys. Among them was the powerful state party figure and attorney, Jim Roosevelt, who worked with the college group on a letter alleging Morse behaved inappropriately. They turned to the state party to help them. They thought they'd protect them, but instead the state party is trying to destroy them, one member of the Democratic State Committee, or DSC, told The Intercept. Martinez reached out to CDMA members repeatedly by phone and text from at least late July up to and including Thursday, record show. In text messages reviewed by The Intercept, Martinez takes an active role in directing the group on the strategy behind the letter before and after its release, including coaching on how to interact with the press. On Thursday, the College Democrats posted a statement that apologized to Morris, adding, we wrote the letter to Alex Morris's campaign on the advice of legal counsel, but did not specify who that counsel was. Now, it's interesting because, you know, even in their apology to Alex Morris, they're leaving out some really key details here. Now, I want to fill you in on some additional context because the lawyer who the state Democratic Party recommended the college students to, who helped orchestrate this by helping them pen that letter, this individual, his name is Jim Roosevelt. The article mentioned him. 
And he is viewed as someone who's kind of a key player in Democratic Party politics in the state of Massachusetts. And he also happens to be the grandson of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And he is helping the state Democratic Party and college Democrats of Massachusetts sabotage the candidate who is trying to help fulfill his grandfather's vision. I mean, FDR is rolling in his grave currently. Unbelievable. Now, Jim Roosevelt is also a notorious Bernie Sanders hater. I mean, all of these people are ghouls, and it's like one big club, one big circle jerk, and they desperately want to make sure that they keep out the left, right? Marginalize the left, smear and attack them whenever they have an opportunity to do so. But sometimes that doesn't always, you know, play out. Like in 2016, the same thing was happening with Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who was a friend and former co-chair of Hillary Clinton. She was sabotaging Bernie Sanders behind the scenes while maintaining that she's neutral. And then WikiLeaks emails confirmed that she was, in fact, trying to rig the primary against Bernie Sanders at the behest of Hillary Clinton. She got busted. She had to resign in disgrace from the DNC. Now, um, they got busted here. And it gets worse for them because after they were able to, at The Intercept, confirm that the state Democratic Party is working with college Democrats of Massachusetts to smear Alex Morris, well, they got busted trying to cover up the crime uh, that they committed. Now, I don't mean crime in like a legal sense. I mean what they tried to do, the dirty deed that they were doing. So The Intercept continues. The executive director of the Massachusetts Democratic Party, as the scandal around congressional candidate Alex Morse began to implode, told student leaders to delete records of communications between themselves and the state party, according to five sources with knowledge of the matter. The executive director, Veronica Martinez, had personally coordinated with college Democrats ahead of the release of allegations of sexual impropriety against the Holyoke mayor. Martinez, one of at least three senior members of the party who spoke with the college Democrats of Massachusetts about the Morse allegations, made the demand after reporting from The Intercept early last week revealed the existence of a long-running scheme by some members of CDMA and the organization's UMass Amherst chapter to undermine Morse, according to two people involved with College Democrats of Massachusetts leadership and three members of the Commonwealth's Democratic State Committee, all of whom spoke on the condition of anonymity for fear of reprisals. The College Democrats have also been advised not to put anything additional in writing. On Friday, Martinez flatly denied the suggestion that that she demanded records of her communications with CDMA members be destroyed, saying simply, that's completely false. The instructions were delivered verbally, but call records obtained by The Intercept line up with timing, and other statements from Martinez on the timeline and her involvement have also been proven wrong by documents reviewed by The Intercept. Multiple attempts throughout the weekend to reach Martinez for follow-up comments were unsuccessful. Hmm, I wonder why. Evidence of the communications was not successfully destroyed and, along with multiple sources, formed the basis of an Intercept report Friday that Mass Dems leadership was in communication with the college Democrats about the concerns they raised regarding Morris, including offering coaching on how to deal with the press. Martinez on Thursday told The Intercept that her involvement with the CDMA letter ended when she and Mass Dems chair Gus Bickford referred members of the student organization's board to legal counsel. A lawyer who turned out to be Jim Roosevelt, a powerful attorney with ties to players in state and national democratic politics. Now, what is astonishing to me is how they keep lying even after they've been busted. I mean, it's been proven that you did this. You tried to plant this smear of Alex Morse. You then tried to cover it up. And now they're trying to cover up the cover up by just lying. But you've been caught. The Intercept proved that you were lying. So to only lie further, that makes matters worse for you. It makes you look worse. So what we should be seeing now is mass resignations. Victoria Martinez should be resigning immediately. She should be embarrassed, should never show her face in party politics again. Um, we should see the state Democratic Party sever the relationship that they have with Jim Roosevelt. Because that's a conflict right there that is leading to uh, this type of smear, hit piece, right? They recommended him. He's kind of like their fixer in a way. So sever that relationship. Prove to us that you're trustworthy. On top of that, we should see individuals like Timothy Ennis, who was the college student who tried to, you know, get this into a national story. He should be resigning. I mean, there should be consequences. There should be accountability.
but we likely won't get that. But at a minimum, it seems as if there may be justice in the form of Alex Morris defeating Richard Neal, because it's very clear that the reason why they did all of this is because they are terrified, because he kept inching up closer and closer to Richard Neal. And had they not attempted to do this and smear Alex Morris, I mean, who knows if he would have won. But now this is a national story. They have propelled this into the national spotlight. Alex Morris now has national name recognition. Pe people who weren't paying attention to the story, they are now paying attention. And they did this to themselves. Like, you reap what you sow. You made your bed, lie in it. So now we should see some resignations. We should see apologies. And again, if I'm Alex Morris, potentially a slander lawsuit. Because what they did to him is unforgivable. It's homophobic. It's unethical. And the fact that, you know, um, they're basically going to get away with this, even if they've been embarrassed, that's not enough. Like, they should be resigning. There should be pressure from the national party to get the individuals involved with this at the state level to resign. But, I mean, this is uh, politics, and sometimes it gets dirty, and that's just part of the game, apparently. They don't care about ethics or morals. But, you know, if he ends up winning... That will make this a really, really happy ending to a really disturbing story about Democrats trying to smear a gay man.